Let's move on to Uganda and it's my great pleasure to welcome Edith from Uganda. She's going to tell quickly about the Africa Diabetes Alliance. Hello Edith, how is Uganda? Uganda is very, very good. Uh, it's, it's been a rainy day, but uh, we are comfortable and yeah, thanks for having me. Go ahead, take it away. Africa Diabetes Alliance and your work in Uganda. We really look forward to hearing about it. Okay, thank you so much. Um, hello, my name is Edith and I'm here to talk about uh, Africa Diabetes Alliance and the advocacy work we've been doing. Um, could you put up the slides, please? Hello? It's okay, Edith. Just keep on talking. You won't see them in our internal Zoom. They are on. Just keep on talking. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so, we've been uh, doing a lot of advocacy work since 2018. Um, initially, uh, we wanted to basically focus on diabetes education because we knew there was such a, uh, a lack of information about diabetes and how to manage it. And we've found out that actually people really want to learn how to manage their diabetes better. And we've been able to provide those services. In addition to that, we've uh, advocated a lot before doctors and nurses at different conferences and presenting about the patient experience. And a lot of the professionals are very happy to hear about uh, our mm -hmm. experiences living with type one and managing it and what the um, that the telling. So it's been um, an, enlightening an, an enlightening experience. Um, we try to do a lot of peer support and patient education. We've done some research and uh, advocacy as well. So um, in addition to um, advocating for and teaching about nutrition and lifestyle choices, we've come to realize that there are a couple of lessons that we've learned along the way. For example, um, we've learned that a lot of patients don't really, are, are not very comfortable speaking out because they have very low confidence and they don't think they know anything. And that's, that's a challenge because they don't realize how important just sharing their story can be. And we've been talking to them about that, trying to get them to speak up. And yes, a lot of them have actually started to speak up now. So we've noticed there's actually a lot of interest in getting involved. They just don't know how. So um, another, another lesson we've learned is patients are very eager to hear from other patients. And half the time, they would rather ask a fellow patient a question than ask their doctor because they feel like, okay, this person understands what I'm going through. So they might be able to give me a solution. If it's worked for them, chances are it will work for me. But they feel a lot like uh, for a medical professional, because they haven't lived with the condition, it might be a lot more difficult to for them to understand where the patient is coming from. Um, another thing we've learned is that patients are, a really under resource in advocacy in our setting because basically no one really tries to get the, the, the stories out of them and trying to we've been trying to focus on that getting stories out and on our website you can find a blog that actually talks about people's different stories um, also the financial support for advocacy efforts is very low there's a lot of support for there's a lot more support I won't say a lot support when it comes to patients unfortunately that we're not yet really um and and a recognized or um, should i say a supported part of these efforts uh some of the opportunities include you know patients want to learn they want to get skills they want to get involved in advocacy and education and awareness creation um advocacy efforts uh, are still early on so there's a lot of potential that this will actually create a lot of good and the other thing is currently because there's almost no um uh, should i say um so support or financial support or for advocacy and all that chances are um even just a 20 percent increase will show a, in, in support will show a very huge uh, impact in just the activities, just the empowerment of patients. Um, so some of the challenges include a severe lack of opportunities for patients to learn, to get empowered and to get involved, a lack of basic support such as transport, meals, 
people's intent. Um, so also, also sustainability of funding sources. You can get a little funding there and a little funding there, but sustainability is still an issue. Uh, low digital and social media skills are also low that can greatly amplify our impact. Um, we've also come to realize that um, uh, the way forward uh, for us would be best if, uh, for sustainability purposes, we could start a social enterprise for people living with diabetes. Uh, that way, uh, it, it's possible for us to have products that can be, um, you know, sold to different consumers that can actually support advocacy efforts. Uh, we want to keep educating and empowering patients to speak up and start an, an ambassador program with incentives to empower people living with diabetes because, you know, they, then they'll be living healthier lives and they are supported to actually be agents of change in their communities. Uh, we would like to also use our social enterprise to educate uh, consumers as well. For example, adding uh, a product insights and educational notes as well. That could also increase impact. I would like to develop information, education, and communication materials, or what we call the IEC materials, because that's also very low around here. Coming across them is not very easy, but this would aid and ease diabetes education efforts. Um, we also want to uh, continue growing the reach and impact of Africa Diabetes Alliance beyond just Uganda to other parts of Africa. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for letting me share about our advocacy efforts. Um, it's been lovely being a part of you. Thank you. Thank you, Edith. It's wonderful to hear from you, especially because you represent an alliance. So that's, you are in Uganda, you're from Uganda, but I hope this really spreads out. I also want to say at this point that we have a number of advocates from all over Africa joining the DDoC Voices right now. They are listening. I hope that next time maybe some of them will also come forward and present here. You are actually the first patient advocate from the whole African continent to present at a doc day and to come to DDoC. So beautiful to have you here. I hope this will change rapidly in the future. Also through our collaboration with Life for a Child. This is how we get to know each other. This is how we get to know many of the others who are now part of this group of DDoC Voices. It's over a dozen, which I think is great and it is super important. And last point from my side, I congratulate you on this focus on A, education and B, sustainability. The challenges are not different in, in Germany or in Europe, I must say. It's also those two things which are, I think, the most important and the most powerful. But I do realize that where you are from, it is probably much, much more difficult to get to a degree where you can really get there also on the financial front. And maybe maybe this format, maybe Doc Day, maybe you reaching out here and getting the word out will hopefully change that. Maybe somebody will get in touch and uh, reach out. Thank you very much for being here.